Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And I'm still here on Martinique and here at St. James. And why is it St. James? It really sounds English and, and not very French and I'll come to that. The history here starts at 1765 with a priest actually building here something and distilling some yeah, leftovers to make rum. And before that, there was a sugar plantation and there was another priest doing that. So, yeah, they were really connected to the hospital and they were getting better over the years and years when they really made some good, good rum. But over the years, something happened and that was they got invaded by the British or the English. And the English couldn't pronounce the actual, yeah, Chateau here. It was Chateau Trouvelon or Trou I can't really pronounce it because I speak English. And so they said, yeah, you're now called St. James. And this is why they do actually have an English name. And they grew over the years and years and it's actually the distillery with the longest history. They did rebuild it. And yeah, let's get inside and I'll tell you a little bit more about their most recent history and have a look at a bit of old bottles. The recent history starts in 1973, where the company Cantron, the uh, famous company I think for orange liqueur, um, actually bought the distillery and the surrounding lands to produce rum again. And they actually modernized the whole equipment and yeah, got it up and running again. And in 1989, they actually did buy the brand of Bali. And Bali is the name of the old mayor, I think, on the other side of the town. And they actually um, got very, very old stock. I'll show you some of that footage of that old stock. I've never seen so old stock. This is incredible. And yeah, so you actually got the brand. So the brand of Bali is actually also produced here at the distillery at St. James. And yeah, it uh, went on in 2002, they got bought by Martiniques, which is a French company that actually uh, is um, specialized. They have a bit of champagne, they do have a lot of rum, and they also bought the Glenmory distillery, whiskey distillery. In 2019, they actually did open a museum uh, of uh, La Salle. And La Salle used to be a sugar factory plus a distillery and they actually built it up, renovated it. And you can really see how the sugar was made back in the days. I'll show you some footage here and uh, where the sugar was made and from the sugar, you can also do a bit of distilling to make some rum. Yeah, but we're interested in the, uh, the good sugar cane rum. And let's get into the factory. A good rum starts with the sugar cane. And we've seen a lot of trucks and farmers coming in with their uh, yeah, with our tractors and uh, bringing in the sugar cane and they will be weighed and they will be tested and then they will be uh, sent here and they will be used inside the factory. What they do is they have an electric crusher. I'm not quite sure if they are doing two crushings, one electric and one with steam. And they don't have a steam engine as in very old steam engine, but they have a, a turbine. Turbine always requires a lot of transmission because turbines have to run very, 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 very fast. And the crusher is not at a speed of, I don't know, 60, 70,000 RPM. So you have a transmission and then you crush the uh, sugar cane into little bits. And then after that, it goes into pressing. Interesting enough, they actually do that pressing also with a turbine. And I think the pressing stage one to four is run by a turbine. Also a lot of transmission, you have a, a high to low transmission and then you also have a transmission that separates it to the four uh, pressing stages. What they do is they have five pressing stages. The last one has a, a separate turbine. I don't know why. Uh, today I, I don't have these much information because um, I got my introduction in French and I don't speak French. <laughs> So yeah, you have five stages of pressing 
the fourth and fifth are watered. The second and third, the first one is pressed with virgin. So anyway, and then the water from the fourth and fifth is being recycled in the second and third stage. And after that, you have the, the dry bagasse, the leftover bits that don't contain any sugar or hardly any sugar, a lot of fiber, and it actually burns very really well. So you have a huge boiler that produces a lot of uh, steam at about 26 bar. I don't know how much that is in PSI, but I guess it might be, I don't know, 200, 300, somewhere around there. And yeah, but they don't use all of the bagasse. The bagasse is also stored for electrical plants or other, yeah, um, other materials like fertilizer or something like that. Yeah, so let's get in and see how the sugar juice is being transformed into alcohol. Again, my information are a bit hard to come by because I, I don't speak any French and the people here only speak French. So, yeah, I got some information. So, what I do know is they uh, ferment for 18 to 24 hours, which is a bit misleading because they have uh, four fermentation tanks. So, where you, you multiply your yeast, so when you mix the multiplied yeast with the the sugar juice, then it already is pretty active. So the fermentation is going really, the first stage where the uh, yeast multiplies is really, really fast. So they don't need that long time. Also what they do have, the first on the island, is I've seen that they have a, a cooling spiral. Because when you have fermentation, you can get some harsh taste if the temperature is too high. So what, we, what they do is they use river water to cool it down, to keep it at a certain temperature, and then you don't have these harsh tastes. Um, I don't know how big these are. They have about 18 to 20 of them. But if you know that you have 400, uh, 40, 4 million liters of rum at 55% ABV produced, and you have uh, about 20 of them, and you have 18 to 24 hours of fermentation, you can add, you could calculate how many, how big this is. For my estimation, I would say 40,000, maybe a bit 35, somewhere around there. In the end, you have a product that is uh, the sugar wine that has 3% alcohol and that goes off into the distillation. Behind me are the stills and there are six of them and they are really huge and they have hard stainless steel the bottom half is stainless steel and yeah or two-thirds and the upper third is copper you can think about the column still like this you have a continuous distillation with the plates in them about six to nine plates of copper and they have about 25 to 30 plates in total and the bottom part is kind of the wash still stage so where the, the first vapors evaporate and the top part only has vapors in them. And that means that um, the top part is the one that's doing the, the refining, where the copper contact between the alcoholic vapors and the copper is very important. So yeah, also they produce a little bit less ABV strength. So they come out with 68% ABV at room temperature or 20 degrees temperature, which is then 20, uh, 70 degree, um, 70 percent at about zero degrees Celsius. Yeah. So this is the the way they distill. A little bit uh, rougher, a little bit less, a uh, little bit less less fast or less high, I would say. So interesting to see what kind of rum will uh, come out here. The distillery has three kinds of rum. You have the white rum, you have the brown rum, and you have the golden rum. The white rum is stored in steel tanks and you have the oxidization going on, a little bit uh, reduction, so reduction, and that makes it a bit more round and a bit more drinkable. If you'd have it straight from the still, it might be still a little bit harsh. Then the next stage, <coughs> or the next more matured rum is the 
yeah, the amber rum or the yeah, golden rum, which is stored in these huge tanks here. They have a capacity of 34,800 liters. <clears throat> and they still give a little bit of color into the rum. I'm really amazed of how much color there is in this rum. And yeah, you have to age it for at least one year here to be this, yeah, to be at this level of rum. Then you also have the aged rum, and the aged rum uh, is stored in yeah, oak barrels. You're gonna have a look at that, you know, probably in the B-roll. And uh, yeah, for that you have specific um, categories, like the VSOP, the XO, and VSOP is four, and the XO is six years old. And yeah, maybe I can try some here, but if I can't, then I'll do it ho at home in the studio. Unfortunately, I did not get anybody for an interview. I would have gotten someone for an interview, Mark Sassier, but uh, unfortunately, Mark does not speak English very well. He speaks, uh, yeah, English is about as good as I do. Nah, he does a lot better than and I do French because I don't speak any French. Yeah, but I now do speak a little bit of French with the uh, um, accent free. Yeah, no, um, I'm not accent free. <laughs> I have a horrible accent and only have the yeah, the technical terms. I, um, yeah, with all the technical stuff. So I could could communicate with Mark and and it was quite nice. But unfortunately, that was just not. Uh, a way of doing the interviews. I always had a few problems with interviews because the the interview partners were yeah, breaking up and yeah, I uh, don't know that word in English and and yeah, it was a bit a bit heftier that to do all the interviews with all these yeah more French focused people I would say. So anyway, uh, let's have a look at the uh, bottlings of Saint James, and we are having a uh, you know, a bit of a collection here from St. James and you will find all of these rums on whiskey.com for all of you who will uh, order from uh, Netherlands or Belgium you can find these on whiskey.com and we're starting off with St. James Imperial what is it Imperial Blanc yeah, a bit of an homage to that they are a bit more British than the others Imperial what is that it's just Imperial French yeah um, there was always a bit of a misconception when I went there. They always l talked to me about when they had the blanc, uh, the, uh, the rum blanc, the, the white rum. Uh, they did the reduction, and I always thought like, yeah, reduction is just watering it down, yeah, you know, to f drinking drinking strength. You have it about I don't know 70, 75, somewhere around there, maybe 80, and you water it down to 40 percent, and that's it. You no, know, uh, the the reduction, reduction uh, is um, a lot more. While it is watering down, they do have a tradition of watering it down slowly, like over month. Just add a little water, add a little more water, add a little more water. And also what I quite got from different sources is um, they do also um, expose it to air. So they bubble air in it. And the air is the reductive part of the maturation. You have oxidization going on and all the, the sharp parts you don't want, they oxidize more quickly than the alcohol. So when you air it, when you oxidize it, then you uh, actually take out these unwanted sharp flavors. So sometimes you get white rums that are really, really sharp and white rums that are just nice sounds smells round actually it does smell round and uh, this is when you have a well matured well what aired um what do you call it uh, white rum so if you have a a tank that's just full with rum uh, airtight sealed you just land it stand there and then there's not that much going on in there but if you air it if you mix it a little bit then it it reacts and it becomes smoother yeah nice so this is a Fairly nice sugar cane, sugar, oh, the pure, pure cane and uh, Appellation Original Condolage, so the, the AOC one. So um, it has to be matured for I think three or six months. Uh, I think three is minimum and six months they do, or five months. I think I had it in the video. Um, so you realize very nice round vanilla, a little bit of a herbs thing going on, a little bit of a 
Easter thing going on, like like the the uh, the Easter spiciness that com usually comes from a long fermentation, which they don't hear. No, strange. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm. it's nice, warm, um, has a, it feels like a, a really well matured nice white rum. It has that a little bit of a, how oh, do I say, green flavor to it, like a little grassy sugarcane note to it, I would say, like when you have when you have your sugarcane chewed out and just a bit grassy left and a bit of fiber left, um, with a little bit more, yeah, fruits in it, a little bit of fruit in it, mm. and very well reduction and it's it's nice it doesn't have any sharp flavors they're just cut out yeah so let's have a look at the the saint james vsop vsop stands for very uh, very special old pale yeah i think that's the the um I think it's a three or four year old, I think somewhere around somewhere right that. that. Um, unfortunately, they went with the old kind of sherry cognac style of um, doing the the ages. I would have loved it if, if they had just written on the numbers. If, if you realize they're matured in Martinique, three years old is plenty old. Mm. Mm. Oh, and this one has a a nice uh, vanilla touch to it. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Three years old is a very nice age for a uh, for a rum. Three to four years is nearly perfect age for for a rum. We have. Um, Good amount of vanilla caramel flavors that you get from the cask, but not overwhelming. You feel a little bit the sugar cane, the the distillery in there. If you go above that with the XO, with the uh, older age statements, you have a lot more oak in it. Mm. This one is a, a pleasant to drink. It has 43% ABV. It um, very well matured. I think they do the reduction as well in here, and uh, it's it's just mm, fruity vanilla caramel, sweet raisins, a little bit of chocolate in there. Just a a pleasant um, a pleasant drink for an evening. Mm. Mm. I do can recommend to go to St James. Um, it's not very close to the airport or very close to the the pier with the ship, but it's closer than let's say the the other one that is very very beautiful, the um, rum jam, and so um, I do recommend it because it a it has a production, although the production is kind of a bit industrial style, um, you do have. Um, what do you call it? You do have production and you can visit the production. You can walk around, you can take, take pictures and have a look at everything. And it's very nice. You have a very nice visitor center with a museum of distillation in it. It's kind of a two story, a two part building and a lot of stuff where you can see the fields and all that kind of stuff. And there is a bar where you can try all of these uh, rums and, and then there's also a little train that goes to La Salle, which is the old, yeah, connected distillery in the region which they use as maturation and they show the old um, yeah, sugar making factory of I don't know 17 1800s or something yeah <clears throat> mm. so uh, a due recommendation to go to St. James although I'm not quite sure how they are with English and um, German 
or Dutch <laughs> or French. In French, they're really good. <laughs> in French, they're really good. So I did have a bit of trouble in that distillery to, to communicate. That's hence why I can't show you anybody who does speak English. <laughs> oh, smell. It's a, it has really, it smells like um, grandma's rum cake. It really smells like that rum cake where grandma always used to put in too much rum in it. <laughs> so yeah, that is chocolatey vanilla rum, <laughs> rum and a lot of raisin and yeah, that that cake from grandma. Hmm. 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 Oh, round, pleasant, very crispy, crunchy, nutty, vanilla, caramel character, but still a lot of oak in it. You do have that little bit of a dry feeling in your mouth in the end. It's not overwhelming, but it's already there. You realize, okay, an XO is definitely extra old for um, a Martinique rum. It has just that amount of oak in it. Six years. That is the six years. That um, for, um, be careful. XO with cognac is ten. XO with uh, rum Martinique they go with six. So there is a difference. Hence why I don't like really the taking the same nomenclature as the uh, cognac and then changing a little bit. That makes it just more confusing. Just write six on it. Yeah. And yeah, let's go with the the last one. If I already said, okay, this has a bit more of that chocolatey, bitter, tannins, oak character in it. This is double as old. This is a 12 years old. These are really not common with uh, rum. They're really uncommon. Um, so let's have a try. Oh, very dark, very dark. This smells like a bit like bitter chocolate. Yeah, chocolatey, cacao, a little bit of a nuttiness in there. You do find a little bit of a sweetness and a rum character in there, but very chocolatey. Mmm. 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 Oh. I do love all the rums and I do always want to give a rum a good chance. And I don't mean it uh, demeaningly, but this one's bitter. <laughs> yes, uh, this has really a feel of 80% chocolate. So it has a lot of tannin. It has that cacao flavor, very dark. Um, the, the nuts are more of like a, you know, when you have the nuts that are not matured nuts, like fresh nuttiness that is a bit, stringy and a bit um, bitter in your mouth. Mm. Mm. This is really when you have that 80% chocolate with um, a rum flavor, dark leathery. I don't want to say smoky, but smoky is different, but it has that muffy old bitterness, leathery type. If you like that kind, that, that is a, a perfect rum. This is definitely not one of these, yeah, everyday sipping. This is the SOPs, everyday sipping. This one is a lot more sophisticated. You can sip it every day, but this one is uh, just uh, demands attention, demands you to like bitterness. If you don't like bitterness, if you're more of the bourbon type or Rum Blanc or the younger rums, this will be a lot. This will be tannins, tannins, tannins. So this shows how much really a cask can do. Hmm. Yeah, mm, nice. Yeah, so that was it. That gives you a little bit of an overview. I just taken four of there their rums, they do have a lot more rums and I think they have also liqueurs with the shrub and all that kind of stuff as well. 
all over the world. Not quite sure how much is available in which country. Uh, these here are available on whiskey.com if you live in the Netherlands or in Belgium. And yeah, so that was it with the St. James Distillery. I can highly recommend you visit the distillery if you are at the island of Martinique. And thank you very much for watching and see you next time.